Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Drum Talk. Today we have a very interesting guest with us, Nick Sampson, producer, engineer, as well as guitar player in the band I'm Abomination. And Nick Sampson, uh, you know, he was a protege of mine for a few years and branched out on his own as, and does his own projects now. And recently he has worked with uh, Polyphia and Crucible. And we were talking a little bit earlier about Crucible and how you uh, kind of set up the drums and you were saying that this was all programmed, um, and I just kind of wanted to pick your brain on uh, how you approach the drum sounds on that. Um, well, to start, we had uh, the Superior Drummer app, and I have that to kind of like write with, and I have it. Um, I ended up using the cymbals from that as a final sound, but uh, the shells, I printed all the drums down when I was ready, and then I ran them through Trigger with some drum forge samples and I was able to blend like five or six different samples for the close mics and then a few for the room mics. And then I split those out to separate tracks and process them individually from there. Were you using the unprocessed uh, drum forge samples or the processed ones? I actually a little bit of both. I noticed okay. I, I like using the unprocessed ones for like the close mic uh, stuff because um, the sound of a an unprocessed sample hitting a compressor is much different than a process sample hitting a compressor. So, like, I planned on doing all that processing afterwards, so I chose to use the unprocessed samples for the close mics, but for the room mics and the overhead mics, I actually used the processed ones. That's cool. So, for a band like, like Polyphia, where you've got live drums, um, I'm sure there's maybe some degree of, of sample oh. blending in there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I did... I think what we ended up doing for that one, on the snare, I used samples, a drum forge sample again. I used an unprocessed one, um, kind of to like add some more snap. And uh, the ability to boost the top on a live snare drum is kind of hard because you have like cymbals and other drums that are bleeding in the mics. So it's kind of unavoidable. So like what I like to do is kind of chill out on the top boost on the actual live track and then use a sample and then top boost that because I know I'm not going to get any bleed on that so I'll end up with the snappiness and like the crispness from that and then I'll have the tone and everything from the other drum the actual mic drum that's awesome so you know you being a guitar player and a songwriter um, you kind of need all kinds of different tools versus when you're being a producer and an engineer um, do you find that Drumforge helps you write music as well as, as make music in terms of producing, or is it kind of one or the other tool for you? Um, I mean, it, it definitely has its place in both worlds. Um, as, as a producer, um, I love the versatility that it gives me. I love the fact that you have drums sampled with multiple microphones, which is like something that's, I mean, it's a process that we all go through when we track drums. You know, we try different microphones to see which one sounds best for which application. And the versatility you have with that is really cool. And as like a producer and a mixer, I, I can just reach in and grab whatever I want. I can I get lost in there, you know, cycling through all the stuff that's in there. As a songwriter, it's cool too because I mean, it is you have the processed versions of the samples, so it is instant gratification to a certain aspect, to where I can just reach in and grab those and know that they're gonna sound good, you know. And I don't have to waste time like doing that. Like, you have the unprocessed ones where you can really dive in deep and get exactly what you're looking for out of it, and then the processed versions are just there, and they sound good, you know? So I think it's great that it has those features. So, uh, Nick, in terms of when you get to the mixing process, when you're blending these samples in and, and making them fit in the mix, uh, do you use processes like limiting or clipping and compression? For sure. Um, the compression is going to even out all the hits and shape the transient of the drum and through that process you can really over you know overly smash that drum and like make that transient super huge and it gets to a point where the transient becomes way louder than what the meat of the drum is and the actual tone of the drum in order to get that back I'll use clipping and limiting to kind of shave off the top of that and then I'll wind up with something that has a peak that's closer to the the frequencies that I'm actually digging for in there, which is like the punch and the meat and the snap and everything. So definitely clipping and limiting is like a big part of what I do. Yeah, we all kind of started clipping drums, I think, around the same time, I remember. Uh, 
kind of feel like we're maybe a part of this sort of clipping revolution right now. And one of the things that we have just worked on with our most recent plugin is the ability to do multiband clipping. And I was curious, uh, you know, what did you think about DF Clip, and, and what are some of the, um, you know, what are some of the features that stand out to you? Um, when you said that to me, and I was right in the middle of a drum session, and I was like, let's try it, you know. So I popped it on my drum bus, and it's definitely really awesome. the The tilt shift EQ is like real cool because I mean, you have one button that can do something that you would have to spend a little bit of time with an EQ to do, you know. It's like instant gratification at that aspect. Um, the fact that you can have control over different bands and which bands are clipping is really cool because you can really boost that tone, like I was saying, and get that to a point where it's closer in relationship to the peak of the drum. Um, or you can do vice versa, you know, and like really smash the top of the top end of the drum and clip that and leave the tone intact. And uh, it's definitely very useful. It really surprised me because I had it on... I, I generally like to track with some snappy-style drums so I can hear what's going on. So, like, I'll overly compress the drums with the plugins while I'm tracking to hear. And it took that, and it, like, it flattened everything out to a point where it was, like, almost like a final drum sound coming out of the master bus. And it was really surprising for me because I'm not used to that. I, I'm used to sitting there, like, you know, 20, 30 minutes and getting a, a drum sound down, but it was just really there, so it's an awesome plugin. Great, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, no and uh, you, you deserve know. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you next uh, week or a couple weeks from now and just kind of see where you're at with uh, what you're doing, and I just want to say thanks to, for coming on the show and and uh, providing your insight on, on drums. No problem. Thank you.